Hey there, neighbor. What you doing? Oh, hey, what's up? You got your streaming computer in the yard again? Why is that? <laughs> what's a computer? It happened a little earlier than expected. I told you before how the iPad will soon become the ultimate capture solution with the expanded USB device support with iPad OS 17, especially for mobile setups and event travel. And Elgato have once again sponsored me to show you this future of capture setups, this time in action with Reincubate's Camo Studio streaming app and Elgato's brand new capture app. Comment sections and the Discord server have been flooded with requests for an iPad OS version of OBS Studio for a while now. And Camo Studio basically provides exactly that. Camo Studio comes equipped with a scene manager with free templates, support for two video sources at a time, 1080p 30, 60, or 4K 30 output, or vertical streaming, and even browser dock support for keeping up your chat and things like that. Let's make your backpacking stream setup dreams come true. Camo Studio is intuitively laid out, but it does differ a little bit from OBS Studio, if you're used to that. The main section of your screen has your stream preview, where you can resize and arrange your sources. The top bar gives you a toggle for the sources menu, drawing options, record and streaming buttons, audio meters, and general settings. Settings at the moment are pretty sparse, with just light or dark mode options, your username for overlays, and your streaming and recording destinations, in case you want to save your recordings directly to a USB SSD or even an SD card. The left sidebar is where you customize your video and audio sources. You have the option for two video sources. The primary source can be cameras on your iPad, external video sources, or apps running on your iPad if you want to stream iPad OS games like Diablo Immortal or the upcoming Resident Evil 4 remake or Assassin's Creed Mirage ports that are supposed to be coming, apparently. I will say this, it doesn't work great at the moment, and uh, portrait mode games don't seem to work at all with there's a weird crop, and landscape mode puts your webcam in a rectangle frame overlaid on the game in the corner, regardless of your webcam capture settings. So background removal is kind of pointless. It doesn't really work right, because then you just have a gray square, and the frame rate takes an immediate hit when you do this, even when just like swiping through your app menus. It's it's weird, but, but it's definitely a start. Speaking of sources, let's talk about our setup here. Obviously, since Elgato sponsored this video, we had to go for a balls to the walls Elgato setup here with their Facecam Pro Webcam and the HD60X capture card connected to the Corsair TBT200 Thunderbolt 4 dock as the M1 and M2 iPad Pros support Thunderbolt now. That way we can get a capture card and a high quality webcam going at the same time. And we'll go on and tell our captures to save to an SD card in the dock so that we can pop right into our computer for editing, though that's totally not necessary anymore since DaVinci Resolve runs right on the iPad now. And sure, let's flip on the Elgato ring light for some high quality lighting around the webcam. Boom. So for this setup, we'll choose the HD60X as our primary source, running the PlayStation 5 into it. For our secondary source, we'll choose our Facecam Pro. Camo Studio can remove, blur, or replace your webcam background if you want to, which is pretty neat. It honestly seems close to NVIDIA Broadcast over on PC, though it's not 100% there yet. There's also various video filters for color blindness, which could be cool applied to your main source if you're just playing on your iPad and want those features too, or in the filter gallery there's lots of cool color effect filters for your webcam. The last image enhancement is a spotlight option, which basically gives you more brightness on your subject. Then you have options for frames for your webcam. Rectangle, circle, square, or a custom rectangle with a slider to control the shape and corner rounding. You can also even have it zoom in on your camera and automatically pan around with you as you move. It gets a little weird if you start flailing to the edges of the frame back and forth, but it's neat regardless. Lastly, you of course have basic rotation and mirroring options. Then we move on to audio. So unfortunately, all of these iPad capturing apps coming from anyone out at the moment are running into the same iPad OS limitation that is just Apple enforced. They can only capture either the iPad microphones or the most recently connected audio device. This is just how Apple gives developers access at the moment, and it's really annoying. This means that you can kinda only choose your capture card or a connected microphone 
to capture audio from. But the HD60X has a 3.5 millimeter input that you can pair with a separate mixer or something else that can put your microphone and your game sound together for audio. Today we're going to be streaming some Apex. I really hope you're excited because we're streaming it from the iPad. Yeah. This is an unfortunate workaround, and I cannot imagine that Apple will stay, will let this stay, as developers assuredly will want full audio mixing control like already exists kind of in the music apps, but it's the reality for now. One step at a time, okay? The final option here is canvas options. Background color, background image or video, which is neat to have, and format options. You can choose 1080p 30fps, 1080p 60fps, 4K 30fps, or a vertical 9x16 1080p at 30 or 60fps. It's a limited set for now, but it covers most of what people will need at this moment in time, given it's mostly a streaming program. Once you've set up your main sources, you can exit the sidebar and pop down to the Scene Manager panel. Here you can load some template scenes or make your own and move your sources around to your liking. You can even go back to your sources and choose different primary and secondary video sources per scene, which is really great. I, wish, I, I do wish these different panels and sidebars could be permanently docked with a smaller preview so you could use them all at once, but... But hey, with this scene manager, you can make a full screen webcam scene for when you're chatting or out vlogging, a gameplay face cam scene, import your BRB slide or video clips for a BRB scene, and so on. Get creative. The stream panels section let you pull up different web URLs to see while you're streaming. So uh, your chat pop out, event list, and so on. It's very handy. I almost forgot to mention that you can draw on your scenes. The marker button in the top left lets you use all of the usual iPad drawing, highlighting, and coloring tools right on your scenes and then clear them off just as easily. This is something that is actually quite demanded, but very tough to set up on desktop streaming apps. And it's just baked right in because it's an iPad feature. Pretty cool. Obviously, we'll be missing a lot from the desktop streaming side. You know, uh, anything from transitions and browser sources being the obvious ones after the audio mixing capabilities. But this is an incredible start and almost verbatim what I had said was coming in my last video on this. I, I, I said that this would be what came early and yeah, I'd love to say that I knew this specific app was happening all along, but I really just made an educated guess based on the trajectory of things. Quality options for recording or streaming are not present yet though. Uh, Apple again just doesn't give that kind of access to the video toolkit for some reason yet on iPad, given it's the same hardware as their Macs, uh, which do have more thorough video toolkit access, I really hope that they just start facilitating these features. It gives Apple much more market value the more they help out devs in this scenario. But for now, I am quite pleased. This workflow is solid. The Corsair Thunderbolt dock makes it easy to manage all of these devices running to one iPad and even lets you build out something like, say, a dorm room streaming setup where you can just grab the iPad and go for, you know, class or something like that too, which is pretty sick. I will say, just be very careful about bumping the the USB cable on the iPad. This has always been a very sensitive thing on the iPads, very sensitive to the tiniest of bumps for video capture or even video output. And the newest models are no exceptions as you lose me getting a <laughs> getting a win in Apex by, because I got too excited and bumped the cable. When I first started teaching OBS Classic a decade ago, the idea that you could do all of this at high quality and frame rate on something smaller than a paper notebook would have blew my freaking mind. It still kind of does. But what if you would just want to capture your gameplay in a quick and easy way, or dare I say it, play your console games on your iPad as a monitor? That's where the brand new Elgato Capture app comes in. This awesome app supports the HD60X, HD60S+, CamLink and CamLink 4K, FaceCam and FaceCam Pro, and lets you take screenshots, record, or just play full screen and enjoy the beautiful iPad screen as your monitor or TV with a lot lower latency. And it's a pretty slick experience. Again, it does run into the same limitations as Camo Studio when it comes to audio, device selection, or quality choices they can't avoid that. But you do get to choose your device, your format, and where your recordings are stored. Elgato Capture is a simple option that is perfect for your capture sessions while you grind, for vlogs, or for playing on the go. And you can still save your clips to an external drive if you wish. I guess I'll go on and add that I said I really wanted this to come out quickly after the iPad OS 17 update as well, and it did. <laughs>
I, I didn't know any of this was actually in development. Hooking up the Facecam Pro with the Capture app lets you capture in full 4K 60 FPS that the webcam supports, which is really, really nice. You get crisp, clear recordings here. And once the full app is out, you could probably use Split View to pull up your notes, your chat, your outline, your script, whatever, while you're recording. Have both going side by side. Currently in my test flight version, that's not supported. You don't need a computer to even record high quality 4K video anymore. It's pretty wild. And despite having the top of the line newest iPad Pro, the 4K60 on here compared to the built-in camera, even though they're in different spots, is kind of a night and day difference in my opinion. Obviously we're recording with the iPad mic, which is eh, but hey. Honestly, this is going to be the way that I capture a lot of gameplay moving forward, especially if I can throw enough game capture HDs at them to get Elgato to flip on the ProRes encoding for my M2 Mac iPad Pro here. I was about to call it a MacBook. Basically, <laughs> I, I don't usually have dedicated capture setups anymore, but I love capturing gameplay as I go, just for clips, for whatever, especially when I'm in the house gaming with the with my wife and kid, but still want to grab clips. This is, ah, this is basically as convenient as it gets for that kind of setup. I will say Elgato's capture app is absolutely the better choice if your priority is playing from the iPad or just getting fluid monitoring or whatever. The Camo Studio is great if you're just monitoring or if you're streaming because it has all of those elements. And when I tried doing latency testing, they were pretty close. Uh, Elgato's app came in around between 56 and 63 milliseconds of input latency, which is just in line with how the HD60S performs with OBS, with a computer, which is fantastic. But with Camo Studio, sometimes it was around like 58 to 67-ish, but then sometimes the buffer or something just went completely out of whack. And I think it's due to the frame rate just kind of fluctuating a lot more on the preview with Camo's app than Elgato's. Both of them record to variable frame rate videos, but I think Camo's preview varies a lot more. So regardless of what the latency actually is, Elgato's stays far more consistent in terms of the actual fluidity of the frame rate that you're seeing and the input latency. And I was actually able to play just fine from the Elgato preview with Elgato Capture, like surprisingly well. Whereas with the Camo Studio app, it felt like my usual complaints of playing through OBS's preview Elgato's felt like I was just playing on a monitor. It was awesome. Gotta admit, as nice as the screen is on the 12-inch iPad Pro, the bigger size compared to my 11-inch definitely makes it a little more tedious or cumbersome to fit into smaller bags. But the one terabyte of space makes it the perfect content creation machine. Between these, the, these capture apps and DaVinci Resolve on it, running on there, that much space, the extra RAM, oh, I, I, it's great. I cannot wait for the next travel event I have to cover because it's going to go infinitely more smoothly and the lighter of a workflow than what I took to say CES 2020. Check out Camo Studio and Elgato Capture on the App Store and comment below with your experiences so far with capturing or streaming on the iPad or iPad Pro if you've tested the new update. Do you think this will expand to iPhones with the upcoming iPhone 15 Pro Max Ultra Omega having 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports? Click here to learn all about the requirements for this update and head to glitch.mov for my 2023 OBS course for my new color grading and Lightroom presets and that kind of thing, photo prints, all of that. Most of all, remember to be kind, rewind.